Hi, I'm Sherry Hobb. I'm going to show you a project using fast fire bronze clay and how to add color to your metal. And I'll start by using this stamp sheet. And this is the Garden Thorns collection from Dynasty Stamp. And some of my favorite botanical illustrations are included on this stamp sheet. So we'll be using one of those to make a pattern on our metal clay. To begin this project, I've got a piece of fast fire bronze clay and I'm going to be making a pendant that has a floral pattern that we'll later add color to. So I have my little pad of clay here and I'm going to put it on a non-stick surface with two spacers on the side so that it can be rolled out to a uniform thickness. And I have a roller and I'm just rolling out my clay. And I can see that that is a little bit dry, so I need to add a little moisture to the clay. And it's good to see this because if you see these cracks around the edge, you know that you need a little bit more water. So always put it in the center, fold it in on itself, and then you can knead it till it's a very soft, smooth consistency. And I will roll it back into a ball, and hopefully it won't have that problem the next time. So we set it down and I'm going to be rolling it into a long oval shape and you can flip it, get it the shape that I want. Don't worry too much about your edges, I can refine those later and trim them away. And so I've got this pad of clay. So now I'm going to press it onto my stamp sheet. If your stamp sheet has been used quite a bit or it's new, you want to put just a little bit of slip so that your clay won't stick to the surface and I'm using just a little bit of the cool slip on here. Just make sure you don't have too much. And then I'll take my clay and place it right over the top. And it's, your hands are your tools. That's how you can feel how thick that you're pressing into the design and I kind of feel through the stamp to make sure I'm picking up that flower and maybe just give it a quick roll with a roller. I don't want to press it too thin, but I also want to pick up the detail. The nice thing about clay is you can always roll it up and start over. And there I've got my pattern on there. And so now it's time to let this dry. But before I do, I'm going to take a needle tool because I want a little hole at the bottom so I can hang a bead dangle. And I just pierce a hole here. And then I pierce a hole at the top. Make sure you're not too close to the edge so that you have room to file. Now later, after this is all dry, I'm going to file the edges with a nail file and shape this into a little bit um, of a more refined shape. So that can just set to dry. After my piece is dry, I can refine the edges with a nail file. So as soon as I can pick this up and it feels fairly sturdy, be gentle with it because it's very fragile at this stage before it's been fired but I can hold it with, support it with my fingers and take a file and I'll just file around the edge to get rid of any imperfections or shape it any way that I would like. And I like to keep these pieces irregular and sort of organic in shape so that they look old. So I'll just sand around the edge with a file and then when I'm happy with the shape as a last step what I like to do is just take my finger or a paintbrush and just go around the edge and pick up that dust and smooth it around. This takes the place of maybe three other grits of sandpaper and saves me a lot of time. And then for the holes, I want to make those larger because as it fires, that's um, going to become even smaller. So I'll take the tip of a knife and be really careful when you use a sharp knife like this not to cut yourself. Be gentle. And I'll support the piece and take the knife and I just twist it around and shave the hole to make it larger. Make it a little larger than you think you need it because you're going to want to put a fairly large jump ring in that area and you don't want to have to drill it after the fact, but you could if you needed to. It's just going to be metal. And then I'm going to fire this piece according to the directions for fast fire bronze. So put that into your kiln and fire it as, as directed. And then when it's done, you can tumble the piece to make it nice and shiny. I have one here that's been fired and I've tumbled it and burnished it. Or you could just leave it natural. That's, a sometimes, that's sometimes a pretty look to have more of a matte finish with some coloration that, that came through with the bronze. 
And now the fun part, we're going to add color to this piece. And anybody that knows me knows that I love to add color to metal. So to do this, we could use acrylic paint or a wax paste, for example. But what I like to do is use pure pigment powders. And I've mixed up a blue one here and sort of make my own paint. So I'm gonna use a few drops of acrylic medium. And this is how you make one of a kind pieces because you made the color custom fit to what you like. And I just mix the pigment powder in with the acrylic medium. Depending on the pigment, some are grainier than others. So you just add a little bit of acrylic until it looks like paint. And I'll use a paintbrush here. And I'm just gonna paint it on the entire surface of this flower pushing it into all the little crevices. If I use just a little, it'll have sort of a watercolor effect, and if I use more, it'll look more like an enamel that's been set down in there. And you can have fun with this. And then just take the corner of a paper towel or a Q-tip, and you can just wipe off the surface. And the pigment's going to stick down into those recessed areas. And maybe get this just a wee bit damp. That blue pigment, because bronze clay is so porous, it, it kind of sinks down into the pores of the clay and kind of gives it an old world patina look as well. So after rubbing it in, and then I can add a, a little bit more where I've missed some spots. And then as a final step, what I will do is heat set this with a hot hair dryer or a rubber stamp heat gun just for about a minute. And that will set the acrylic medium and make it much more durable so that you can wear it without worrying about any flaking off. And since the paint is in the recessed areas, it also helps because you won't be abrading it as much while you're wearing it. You can see that by changing the paint color, I can change and vary the design quite a bit depending on the colors that I choose, all coming from the same design from the stamp sheet. So that allows you a lot of creativity to decide what you want to do with color, and it's so much fun. And then as a final um, idea, you can add a jump ring and a chain, or you can add a little dangle, which I love to do. It just gives the piece movement and a little more color. And I've used a head pin here with a few beads and then attached it with a wrapped loop at the top to make it a finished piece. Have fun with color and metal clay and just feel free to um, experiment and try many different things with color. And you can find the Garden Thorn stamp sheet and many others at riogrande.com. Thanks.